The 1930s were a remarkable era in the history of Manhattan, New York. The city was bustling with energy, resilience, and innovation, despite the challenges posed by the Great Depression. From the dazzling skyscrapers to the vibrant cultural scene, life in Manhattan during the 1930s was a unique blend of glamour, struggle, and artistic expression. Let's delve into the fascinating details and explore the daily lives of New Yorkers in this iconic decade. 1930 was a historic era for Manhattan, New York City, as the Great Depression gripped the nation. During the Great Depression, Manhattan was hit hard by the economic crisis, as it was the financial hub of the nation. The effects were felt across various sectors, with a significant increase in unemployment rates, nearly reaching 25% in the city. Many businesses, particularly in industries like manufacturing and finance, had to close down or lay off employees. The closure of banks added to the sense of uncertainty as people lost their savings and struggled to access credit. Homelessness and poverty became prevalent with shanty towns known as Hoodervilles springing up in the Central Park and other areas. However, even after the hardship, Manhattanites displayed resilience and a sense of community. Soup kitchens and bread lines were established to provide food for the needy. Mutual aid societies and relief organizations offered assistance and support to struggling families. Local artists and performers organized free concerts and exhibitions to boost morale. Furthermore, innovative approaches were taken to cope with the crisis. Rooftop gardens were created to grow vegetables, helping to supplement food supplies. Community centers offered educational and recreational programs to keep spirits high. One of the historical incidents for Manhattan was the Dust Bowl migration. During the 1930s, the Dust Bowl, a devastating ecological and economic crisis, drove a wave of migration from the affected areas to Manhattan. The Dust Bowl, primarily impacting states such as Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, Colorado, and New Mexico, was characterized by severe drought, intense windstorms, and crop failures. These environmental challenges, coupled with the economic downturn of the Great Depression, led many farmers and their families to seek new prospects elsewhere. Manhattan, with its reputation as a bustling metropolis and economic center, attracted individuals seeking better opportunities. The city offered the promise of employment, diverse industries, and the chance to escape the hardships of rural life during the Dust Bowl. Many migrants found work in industries such as manufacturing, construction, and service sectors, while others pursued new careers or sought relief through government assistance programs. The influx of the Dust Bowl migrants added to the cultural and demographic diversity of Manhattan. These individuals brought with them their unique experiences, traditions, and perspectives, enriching the fabric of the city. Their presence contributed to the growth and vitality of neighborhoods, such as the Lower East Side, which had historically welcomed immigrant populations. Manhattan is not just innovative and advanced today. It was starting in the 1930s time with multiple skyscrapers and architectural marvels. The completion of the Empire State Building in 1931 marked a significant milestone. Soaring at a height of 1,454 feet, it became the tallest building in the world, a symbol of American prowess and the epitome of Art Deco design. The Chrysler Building, completed in 1930, with its iconic stainless steel spire and intricate ornamentation captured the imagination of New Yorkers and became an enduring symbol of the city's skyline. These architectural marvels showcase Manhattan's determination to push the boundaries of engineering and design, solidifying its position as a global center for architecture and urban development. The neighborhoods and houses in Manhattan are among the things we all admire. However, it was from the 1930s, a time when Manhattan was a patchwork of various neighborhoods, each with its unique beauty. The Upper East Side, known for its affluent residents and grand townhouses, represented the epitome of elegance. Greenwich Village, on the other hand, was the hub of bohemian culture and attracted artists, writers, and intellectuals. Harlem flourished as the center of African-American culture, fostering the Harlem Renaissance with its artistic achievements. Housing in Manhattan during the 1930s varied greatly. While the wealthy occupied spacious apartments and brownstones, many others resided in tenements and cramped quarters. The economic hardships of the Great Depression forced families to make do with limited resources. 
resulting in shared living spaces and creative solutions to accommodate their needs. How was transportation at that time? Well, similar to what we see in some movies, it's true. In the 1930s, Manhattan's transportation system relied on yellow taxis and extensive streetcar network. The iconic yellow taxis, a familiar sight, bustled through the city streets, serving as a convenient mode of transportation. Meanwhile, streetcars, also known as trolleys, crisscrossed Manhattan, providing reliable travel options for residents and commuters. Passengers would board streetcars, paying fares to conductors as they traveled along established routes. The subway system, which began expanding in 1904, continued to grow during the 1930s. New lines and stations enhanced the efficiency and affordability of subway travel, allowing commuters to navigate different parts of the borough swiftly. Pedestrians also played a significant role, bustling through the streets on foot as they went about their daily activities. The era was the rise of cultural scenes for Manhattan, which was a dynamic and vibrant tapestry of artistic expression. Broadway theaters dazzled audiences with unforgettable productions, including John Steinbeck's Of Mice and Men and the theatrical adaptation of Margaret Mitchell's Gone with the Wind. The world-renowned theater district became a beacon for theater enthusiasts, attracting both local New Yorkers and visitors from around the globe. Jazz music thrived in Manhattan's nightclubs and speakeasies, providing a pulsating soundtrack to the era. The Cotton Club in Harlem, known for its glamorous atmosphere, featured legendary musicians like Duke Ellington, who composed and performed his pioneering jazz compositions there. The Apollo Theater, also in Harlem, showcased a multitude of talented African-American performers, including the unforgettable voice of Billie Holiday. Maybe we all don't know about this. Manhattan's high society and affluent individuals flocked to its exclusive clubs and restaurants during the 1930s, shaping what became known as the Cafe Society. The Stork Club, an iconic hotspot, attracted luminaries from the entertainment industry, politicians, and socialites. It epitomized the allure of glamour and exclusivity with its elegant decor, live entertainment, and impeccable service. El Morocco, Another renowned establishment provided a sophisticated ambiance for Manhattan's elite, offering an atmosphere of opulence and prestige. These venues became the epicenter of high society gatherings, where the wealthy and famous mingled, socialized, and enjoyed extravagant nights of entertainment. In Manhattan, the 1930s were a thriving decade for artistic movements too. Surrealism, with its dreamlike and imaginative qualities, found an enthusiastic following among artists and art enthusiasts. Salvador Dali's iconic works, such as The Persistence of Memory, captivated audiences with their unconventional and symbolic imagery. René Magritte, thought-provoking paintings, like The Treachery of Images, challenged traditional perceptions of reality. These artists, along with their contemporaries, inspired local artists and influenced the artistic landscape of the city. Simultaneously, abstract expressionism began to emerge as a significant art movement, laying the groundwork for its future prominence in the following decades. Artists such as Arshile Gorky and Willem D. Kooning experimented with abstract forms, vibrant colors, and expressive brushwork. Their works embodied emotional depth and a departure from representational art, foreshadowing the latter achievements of artists like Jackson Pollock and Mark Rothko. During that time, Manhattan had a remarkable fashion revolution characterized by classy and magnificent looks. The Art Deco era was embraced by women's fashion with bias-cut gowns that clung to the body and highlighted a sleek and thin form. Luxurious fabrics such as silk, satin, and velvet were favored, often adorned with intricate beading and embroidery. Wide-brimmed hats adorned with feathers or flowers added a touch of glamour to ensembles. Fur accessories like stoles and muffs were popular choices for chilly Manhattan winters. Meanwhile, men's fashion exuded timeless elegance with tailored suits featuring wide shoulders, high-waisted pants, and double-breasted jackets. Fedora hats became the iconic headwear of the decade. Fashion luminaries like Coco Chanel and Elsa Schiaparelli influenced the era's trends, bringing innovative designs and modern sensibilities to the forefront of Manhattan's fashion scene. Sports and entertainment were integral to the lives of Manhattan residents in the 1930s. Yankee Stadium, the iconic home of the New York Yankees, hosted thrilling baseball games that captivated fans. 
the stadium became a symbol of American sports and witnessed legendary players like Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig. Madison Square Garden, a renowned venue, hosted exhilarating boxing matches that drew passionate crowds, featuring boxing legends such as Joe Lewis. The Polo Grounds, a historic stadium, hosted college football games, attracting enthusiastic fans and fostering a sense of community spirit. These sporting events provided moments of excitement and unity, offering a temporary escape from the economic hardships of the Great Depression, and became an essential part of Manhattan's cultural fabric. One interesting thing you should know, there have been persistent rumors about the existence of underground tunnels in Manhattan, including some dating back to the 1930s. While there is evidence of certain tunnels, the extent and purpose of these underground passages remains shrouded in mystery. Some reports suggest that these tunnels were utilized for illicit activities, including smuggling and secret meetings. Additionally, there are tales of criminals using these hidden routes as escape paths. While confirmed tunnels exist, such as those associated with the subway system and utility infrastructure, the existence and purpose of other rumored tunnels are largely unverified and have become the subject of urban legends, adding an air of intrigue to Manhattan's history. So guys, that was it for this video. What did you think about our video? Let us know in the comments section below. If you are new to our channel, be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell to get notified about our latest videos. Thanks for watching.